We are co-sponsors of Art in the Endangered Landscape, which is the event that's happening up here today. And so we've got a ton of artists out kind of all over the landscape documenting this really special place and the species that live here. And the art that comes out of today's efforts will actually be going on a, a traveling art tour throughout the state um, later this fall so that we can really celebrate this landscape, um, celebrate the artists and the art that they're able to produce and bring awareness as to what's going on up here at Wolf Creek to a broader audience. The basis for my inspiration really is the landscape, so when I see areas like this uh, and consider the kind of thing that's happening here, it very much is a part of what I find concerning about how we engage in the environment. My charge in valuing that landscape is how do we preserve it. If it's really extra special, like this country is up in here, then it behooves us to do something to preserve that visual beauty. We've been actively uh, opposing a resort development here since 1986. This chapter is about just celebrating what we have now, and then we need to balance that with, you know, what are we talking about changing and why, and is that a good thing? The idea just kind of went from this kind of small, low-key development to this massive city, really, the, the size of Aspen. And there are some areas that we need for the 21st century that have intact ecosystems that people can go to where they can just really understand and feel what it's like to be on a landscape the way it was a thousand years ago. So few of those places are left in this country. And we need to stand up and we need to say, this isn't appropriate. And that's what we're doing here today. And that's why the artists are painting this landscape. So from an environmental perspective, you know, we're at over 10,000 feet high on the Continental Pass, movement corridor, links, rare wetlands. Um, this is really a special place ecologically and one that we would uh, hate to see destroyed for, for one developer's uh, money-making interest. We've had to fight the government and in fact sue the government to get them to release the project documents. And when we look through those documents, we know why they've been so cagey to give them to us, which is it was a poorly constructed process really driven or at least influenced um, unduly by the developers and the Forest Service has used an improper process to review its own process internally. We really think that the federal government still works for the people but in order for that to happen we need people to raise up their voices and to speak out and let their elected representatives as well as the Forest Service know that they want Wolf Creek Pass preserved.